Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So, I have three reasons why most people are not successful at dating and in their relationship. And I'll tell you about them right after this. So, you're not successful at dating and in your relationship, and the very first reason is your baggage. Now, yes, I have talked about baggage before, but I will also mention it here again because most people are not realizing how detrimental their baggage and them holding on to their baggage actually can be. As I mentioned before, your subconscious mind is actually trying to help you stay away from the hurt and pain that you actually felt before. And so because it's doing that, it's subconsciously blocking off anything that can look like hurt or pain. No, not getting in. It's keeping that wall up to here for you. And maybe you're lowering it just a little bit, but just enough so you can see what's going on. Not because you're truly ready to open up your heart and let somebody else in. Because you want it. And so you inch in toward specifically your relationship. So you inch in toward it. But something about it. Like, nah, 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 nah. Nah. Mm. But a lot of that you don't even realize is because of your baggage and you have yet to deal with what happened to you, the hurt and pain that your friends, your family, your, your, you know, your cousins, uh, uh, anybody on the outside, and specifically your exes. All of that hurt and pain that they caused you is because you didn't deal with it. So you really have to figure out a way to get rid of your baggage so you can... Dust off your heart, knock down that wall, take down them bricks so you can let somebody else come, come into your heart and know that it's actually the right thing to do because man was not meant to be alone. God made Adam, but he also made Eve because he didn't want Adam to be alone. He didn't want man to be alone. So he made a help me. Us, the ladies. He made us. He made us for one another. Now, if you're at the stage right now where you just don't want to be in a relationship, ha, that's fine, honey. You don't have to beat yourself up. But at some point, you're going to have that longing, nagging feeling. And so before you even get to that stage, take care of and deal with your baggage. But first of all, identify what that baggage is. Second of all, pray and ask God to help you get rid of those painful feelings and for you to forgive the person or people that was involved in your hurt and pain. And you're not forgiving the person because of them. You're forgiving the person because of you. So you can move on. So you can stop holding on and experiencing those old memories those old experiences, you can let them go. So the very first reason why a lot of people are not successful at dating them in their relationship is because of the baggage that they're holding on to. The next reason why most people are not successful at dating in their relationship is the fear that they are holding on to. You see, I love what Les Brown says. He says that fear is false evidence appearing real. And fear is the killer of many dreams. Your dreams of being successful. Your dreams of getting that promotion. And yes, the dreams of you having a healthy relationship. I remember when I was fearful and had to do with relationships because I was actually fearful of approaching men. Yes, your girl was the approacher. And I was fearful for rejection, just like men go through. Fearful of him just saying, no, or girl, get out of here, or abruptly getting up and walking away like I wasn't standing there, or even him being a little bit cruel and being like, you know what, 
you so ugly. Why would you approach me? And then I had to realize, guess what? Sometimes some of these things are going to happen, but it's okay. You're not going to go home and slice your wrists, try to hang yourself all because you got rejected. You're not going to do that. And so then I continued on to approach the men. And ladies, I have to say that I went out on exponentially more dates than any of my friends or any of my female associates. All because I did this simple yet terrifying act of approaching the men first. Now, I have to be honest with you. I didn't get this confidence to approach the men until I was married and divorced. Because the thoughts that went through my head was, you were married before. Somebody had to think you was pretty. And I'm certain he wasn't the only one. Because you had other men flirting with you when you were just dating him, when you were engaged with him, and when you were married with him. So somebody else think you're pretty too. So I continued to plunge. All right. Did it work out every time? Me approaching the guys? Of course not. But I will say about 90% of the time and even higher that it worked out. We exchanged numbers. But ladies, I will have to say as a side note that I did not let my masculine energy overtake and try to be the chaser in that relationship. No, 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 no. I just wanted him to know that I was interested in him, which is why I approached him. Now, you have to also remember that some men are not going to want you to approach them, but you're never going to know who those men are. So take a chance and approach. If he rejects you, it's okay. You're not alone. You won't be the first one who got it rejected. Yes, it's going to hurt your feelings, honey. Yes, it is. But you will be able to pull through all of that. Okay? It's not gonna, you're not going to have to worry about that. It's all right. And I have to say, if you're my friend, you actually benefited from this as well. Because I would approach men that you found attractive too. But sometimes it would actually backfire on me because then the guy would actually want to talk to me versus my friend. And then I would have to figure out a way to get out of that. And anyways, back to fear. Fear can actually stop you from finding and keeping your soulmate or you're the one, your person that you're supposed to live the rest of your life with. It's going to slow it down because you're fearful of doing something about it. The last and final thing that I will share with you why most people are not successful at dating and in their relationship is because... They're not willing to put in the work that it takes. See, most people think that they're just going to find the person. They're going to go out on a couple dates. They're going to start actually dating. They're going to become exclusive, get engaged, get married. And then the relationship is just going to thrive because they chose each other. Honey, that's just not the case. You got to put in some work. But actually, I don't even like to call it work. To be successful in your relationship, it takes you being intentional and maintaining your relationship. Now, being intentional means putting away your technology when it is just you and your spouse in the room. Is this going to happen every time? Of course not. But as many times as it can happen, make it happen. Put up that technology and just spend time with your spouse. Talk with your spouse. Cuddle with your spouse. Hold hands with your spouse. Have sex with your spouse. Watch TV with your spouse be intentional about making your spouse a priority as well as your a relation as well as your relationship in general because they're the most important person in your life excluding your children so why do we neglect the most important person in our lives and i know why it's because we're busy we're in the rat race Things are happening day in and day out where we are getting distracted from our relationships. I get it. So you have to be intentional. You have to make sure that you're keeping up with your intimacy, making sure that you are keeping up with the connection with your wife, with your husband. Putting in that time and energy. Yes, you're tired. You need to go to bed. But spend that extra 15 minutes with them. Let them know, boo, I just want to see how you're doing before I go to bed. Cuddle with them. Again, you can, you can even, 
You can even have quick with them. Just saying, make sure that you are spending time with your spouse. The next way to be intentional about your relationship is to continue to date. See, most people, when they get into these relationships, they just date in the beginning. And then after they, especially after they didn't get married, they stop dating. And they wonder why the connection is actually starting to break down in their relationships. It's because they're not out there dating one another, having fun with one another, and still realizing why they decided to connect with one another in the first place. They're still going through the mundaneness and the routine of their lives. So think about how you can break that up. Get a babysitter or take the kids with you sometimes. But a lot of times you need to keep the kids with somebody else so you two can have adult time and talk about all of the things that make you you. Check in on your spouse. Have your spouse check in on you. Ask you the things that are very important to you. Like I talked about before, what goals and dreams are you trying to attain that you're trying to reach? Maybe where you're stuck, your spouse can actually hear some new things that can pop into his head and he can share it with you. Or visualize something else that you never thought about. Be intentional. The only way your relationship is going to be successful and even dating is if you are intentional about it. You have to make it a priority. I mean, I hear so many women out here that, and men actually, that are like, I mean, I can't find nobody. Okay, so when was the last time that you been out on a date? Mm, when is the last time you actually put yourself out there? Mm, when was the last time you actually broke up your routine, your routine and not just went home as soon as you got off of work? So how are you expecting to get this and create this relationship as well as keep it without you being intentional? Think about it. So now I ask you, what are you going to do today to make sure that you are different and showing up differently in your dating and in your relationship journey? What are you willing to do today to turn things around? Thanks so much for listening. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if this is your first time here because these will be the types of videos that you always see here because I am supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. I'll see you again in the future video, all right? Deuces.